Wow, I cannot believe that we just built an entire planet. Hi everybody, Wax Fraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. Today we are completing a little section of this nether highway. We gotta get the blackstone buttons on these frog lights. Get the last two right here, and we have the nether portal hooked up. It's brand new. This one actually connects straight to the ruins that we had uncovered for episode 37. I'm over here right now gathering a bunch of cobblestone. This thing is absolutely nuts. These trail ruins are super fun to uncover. We definitely got to get more of those going. But today we are going to be building a concrete planet. Let's grab all of the stone, cobblestone, and andesite that I can get from here. Taking all this back to the starter house. I have a bunch in the auto sorting system, but it's nice to have a little bit left over in the starter house. As I'm traveling back home, I was thinking about some possible advancements I could get in the nether, and I was thinking, we have never really traded with a piglin. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm gonna park my boat right here. I'm thinking we take a quick little stop down at the gold farm. Also gonna say what's up to Link real quick. What up, Link? Ow, thank you. Stronghold ruins gold farm, swamp farm this way. Let's take this boat and head down. Been a while since I've gone all the way here. Dang, this thing is looking magnificent. Drop all the way down, and I think the baby piglin should still be trapped down here. If he is, I'm not sorry he did it to himself, and yep, he is still right here. What's up, dude? Well, this thing is working. We definitely have a bunch of gold nuggets here. Let's take a bunch out. How many bars can we get? A lot of rotten flesh left over. We have one stack of bars. What can we get here? A stack and a half? Not bad. A stack plus 56 is pretty good, considering we haven't really AFK'd here. Now I'm wondering, can I get the O shiny advancement by throwing this guy right here a gold bar? You want that over there? Hey, okay. Is he gonna trade with me? I don't think he's gonna do anything. I gave him the gold ingot and he just gave me an end rod that he had already stolen from me. This can only mean one thing, it's gonna be regular sized piglins. The baby piglins probably do not give you the achievement. Can't believe that guy just traded me for something that he stole from me. Let's go all the way back home here. I'm actually going to take the twisted vines all the way up. Let's take these vines out of the nether hub. Let's find ourselves a regular sized piglin. Actually, I see one all... Oh, I see two over there. Let's fly over. Running up on you, bud. And I got a little bit of gold here for you. You guys want some of that? He's just staring and they threw stuff at me. I got obsidian and a nether brick. Got a bunch of blackstone and some string too. Oh, gravel as well. These guys just keep throwing stuff at me, but I did not get an achievement. Now, this is possibly because they need to be hostile towards me, so I could actually just take this off real quick. I have nothing gold on me real quick, and then I'll just throw this at you. And that's an advancement right there. You know what? Here's some more gold because you guys are so nice and giving me stuff. Thank you for the crying obsidian as well, buddy. I don't know what's going on. There's What is happening? There is so much noise. Hey, you got some Soul Speed 3 boots. Not bad. Man, it feels good to get that achievement out of the way. We got some hoglins over here. Let's put our pants back on. Let's actually go to the igloo that we built two episodes ago. We have an escapee that I actually need to return. These arctic foxes are always causing some trouble. First, I gotta put everything away. I can hear that bone meal farm going strong. Actually, if we go over here, we should have a bunch of poppies that are still... Oh, actually, these are beetroot seeds. There are the poppies. Those new iron farms have been making a lot of bone meal for us with all those poppies. And what's going on, Santa? There is an arctic fox that somehow got on top of the igloo and ran onto the side. Maybe during the construction of last episode. I'm not really sure how he got out here, but here's the igloo, and the arctic fox is over here somewhere. I think if I jump down this way, I should be- Oh, he's actually right here. Dude, how did you get over here? If I can get you on a lead right here. Perfect. Let's jump down. Sir, don't take too much damage. Oh, I'm sorry. Follow me this way, buddy. I'm gonna get you some sweet berries. Open up the gates quick. Get in here. Oh, why are you sleeping, sir? Hold up. Let's go this way. Take you off the lead. This is your new home. I hope you enjoy, sir. Got all the foxes back in their home now. These guys sure are sleepy. Now we can go to the build that we made in the last episode, which was the giant stained glass factory. Let's head over there. The newest installment of the hardcore world is probably the most detailed large build that we have now. We have the tops that are going to be filled up with all of the spruce trap doors, and the middle is all filled up with the stained glass. This thing is crazy. It took a while to build. You float around the side, we have lime green, yellow, and orange. We have the green over here that turns into cyan and light blue. And each of these tower holds just a little bit of uh, each of the colors here. We have a lot of the blue stained glass. We have some of the blue stained uh, panes up there. And if we come through, it's the same as the top, but it's just super mesmerizing because we have a bunch of rainbow shadows. And when the sun is poking through like it is right now, it just creates this misty rainbow fog effect, and I just love it. Definitely my new favorite place to run around in circles for no apparent reason. Let's run out real quick. There's a taiga cat in the village that we actually never named. And uh, what's up, new friend? Hope you're doing well. I'm gonna jump over here so you can't hit me. And you missed. 
First, we're going to take a quick pit stop over next to the starter house. We have an iron golem that's been stuck for a very long time, and I thought it'd be cool to give him a name. And I was just thinking, Daryl right here, he's just going to be stuck, and uh, he's going to be our new favorite iron golem. Daryl, I really hope you enjoy your time stuck out here on the cattails. Now to get the cat named over here, I actually have plenty of suggestions that I could have used from the last episode's comment section, and I do appreciate you guys for throwing out all the suggestions. We have a dirt path that we made to connect both of the islands. Eventually, this right here is going to be a suspended bridge. But this is a project for a whole other day here. I'm going to actually take a left turn. Could have used the nether portal over here, but I wanted to show you guys the dirt path that led all the way over to the Taiga village. And we actually have a cat over here that's about to get named. And what's going on, Taiga? How you doing? Oh, we got another cat up there, too. Bunch of baby villagers over here. I hope everyone's doing all right. Now that we got Taiga named over here, we can actually run through the nether portal. We're going to use it to get home just a bit quicker. Hop in the boat real quick, take a right turn, and zoom, zoom, zoom. And we hit a chicken, dude. You got to get out of the way. Thank you, buddy. Keep forgetting there's random chickens in this hallway. I have a shulker box on the main floor of the starter house I should grab here. It's got a little bit of sand in it. And you know what? I should actually use another shulker box to grab some gravel because we got some concrete powder to make. Let's see what we got right here. Okay, that's a double chest filled up. Let's, uh, let's get the shulker box filled. And just like last episode, let's go upstairs and grab every single color of dye that we can. Might as well grab a stack of each of these. Give me the blue, give me some purple over here, give me the magenta right there. Probably just gonna stick to the colors in the rainbow, so sorry about brown and the grays and the whites and blacks, sorry about that. I'm gonna fly over to our old concrete maker with all of the materials we got. I'm gonna say hello to the council as we fly by. What's up, council? I love how if you listened closely, they actually did say hi back. We're gonna fly through our little jungle here that we still need to get out of the way, and here is our makeshift concrete maker. We can pop in this way, we actually just have any concrete powder that we can load into here. And I believe we actually still have some of- oh, that's actually all sand right there, but we still have some concrete powder that we haven't used, and some concrete that we haven't used as well. Place everything down here, we'll get actually just a little bit of dye, we'll get one, two, three, four of the sand. Four of the gravel here, we'll get the crafting table out, and let's make ourselves some red concrete powder. Get eight stacks of orange next. We'll get eight stacks of yellow going. I don't know why, but it actually looks very satisfying to place all of this concrete powder in lines right here in the shulker boxes. All right, now that is every color that we're going to be using. Probably not enough. We only have eight stacks of each, but uh, let's actually just get going on making all this concrete here. Very simple concrete maker, but we actually have to take some of the concrete powder and replace it with the totem. We'll keep it over here next to our offhand. But then you just place, and after a while, you're going to have yourself a bunch of concrete. You could also go this way. This is a little bit more fun. You can just take some concrete powder right here and just bring it like this all the way up in a tower. Go all the way to the top and we'll drop down only to take out the tower just like this. You can just chill down here and just keep breaking all of the powder as it drops into the water. Sometimes this can take a while, so I'm thinking a Twitch stream will probably be able to take care of this. And that is twitch.tv slash waxfraud if you want to join. We do stream every single day. You know, maybe we should actually pick a location first as well. I kind of want the sphere to be out in this ocean, right behind the Toolsmith Trading Hall. I haven't really built anything out here yet. Probably, you know, just about right in this area. Let's fly back to grab a bunch of temporary blocks. You know, this right here is probably what the planet's going to look like, except this one's a lot more see-through. Back into the starter house. Our temporary blocks are going to be upstairs on the second level. Running over. Let's jump on the cake over here. Let's get a couple stacks of dirt. And let's use the dirt to find ourselves the best place possible. We have the igloo over here, the toolsmith trading hall, the back of the town over here. But nothing in this ocean yet. I'm thinking actually, you know what, let's just go right here and build straight up with the dirt. Up we go, let's get high into the sky. Now we want this planet to be at least 100 blocks minimum all the way across. And so in order to ensure that it can be that big, we're going to have to make sure that we're staying away from the build height limit. That was one stack of dirt right there. Let's just use one more stack of dirt, and then that should be at just about 120 blocks above sea level. And look at that. Now when we're on the beach on the back side of town, we're going to be able to see this planet from the distance. Then we'll start the bottom level of the planet here. This is just going to be red, and as you guys can probably tell, we're going to use orange, then yellow, then lime green. Go up in a rainbow fashion. But we're just going to work on this layer by layer. 
I'm already out of the red concrete, which means we need to head back over to the makeshift concrete maker down here. Pretty soon we'll get one inside the planet, but for now we're gonna have to continue using this guy. Make sure our totem of undying is in the original spot. We have all of the red, orange, yellow, green, lime green, and cyan in there. We have all of the other colors out here as well. Now we just gotta get to building, so let's take these guys over to that red platform. Got a couple of each color. We're gonna fly out here. It's all the way up in the sky. Yeah, it's all the way out here. I decided I want this planet to be at least 101 blocks all the way across. But this is gonna be my first ever planet that I've ever constructed. Got a nice circle going already. We can start to move up with the orange concrete. Then we can start popping out the yellow because we got a red disc, we got an orange disc. Now we can move on. This is about to be the most colorful planet of all time. Moving into the cyan, and all of a sudden, we have a giant bull. We passed the greens, and we actually passed quite a few of the colors, and now all of a sudden, there's some chickens here as well. There's a pretty fun Twitch stream actually getting the initial part of this planet done. The middle is looking a little empty now that the bull is getting complete. We ran out of cyan just now, and we are starting to run out of colors as we move along. We have a little bit of the light blue before we run out. Sunlight's running out, too. It's all fading away. No! The moon is rising, and if I look down, I can barely see the toolsmith trading hall. We are just in a void in the sky. Kind of just made a mob farm up here, too, right now, since it's not lit up at all. But uh, I think we need to actually go back down. We need some gravel and some more sand if we're going to make enough concrete to get this planet done. Head back down here real quick. I don't think I have too much. I actually just had... I think this is all concrete powder. Back at the starter house real quick. I don't remember if I have enough sand to continue, but I'm pretty sure I'm all out of gravel. Yeah, we're out of gravel, but oh wow. Okay, sand we are good on. Let's go get some gravel. I know there's a bunch in the nether. We could go to the nether portal, but first I'm going to go check out the stony shores beyond this jungle. I'm pretty sure extreme hills are actually the best place to look for gravel in this game. There's a lot of gravel on the extreme hills, but the stony shores, I know for a fact there's some here, and it's a lot closer. I haven't been lucky enough to find the extreme hill biome yet, but we did find a bunch of gravel right here. A little bit of this over here, a little bit of this up here. Then we can pop through and gather all of this over here too. We have a whole shulker box and then some. I think this is enough to hold over for now, probably at least until we get the half of the planet done. We have stacks of pretty much all of the dyes except for, it looks like green, we're gonna need more. Good thing we have a brand new cactus farm. Ooh, and some cyan, hold on. We can get the pitcher plants and grab, I think, a bunch of cyan dye with these. Okay, yeah, looks like one stack of pitcher plants makes two stacks of cyan dye. That's pretty nice. Gotta float on over to the second island over here, right past the beet farm and the automatic snow farm to our brand new automatic cactus farm. It's right over here, nestled into the corner, right next to the mushroom farm. Looks like this tree over here might have been burnt down by lightning or something for a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but over here still looking a little bit cozy. We can take all this cactus and get that smelted. Run all the way home. What's going on, Santa? How you doing? Let's get this stuff turned into that green dye. Back to the concrete maker with all of our materials, and I think this might be the last time we end up using this guy before we take it down and move everything up to the planet up here. And hold on. This th oh, this thing is looking crazy. This is only like 15 levels too. We still have like 80 more levels to build. We're living life on the edge again without our totem of undying. I hope nothing is behind us or around us on this beach anywhere. I'm just a little paranoid. We only really needed a little bit of cyan to finish that one layer. And I'm actually just realizing right now I need to fix my elytra and mend up my pickaxes. We need to hold up. We need to trade with some emeralds real quick. On my way to get some emeralds. And of course it starts raining. It is always raining. I'm going to use all these emeralds to buy a bunch of glass from these librarians. I'm going to turn it all into white stained glass. It feels really nice to see the pickaxe get away from that zero durability mark. I guess it's kind of nice that it's raining because we can see the nice effect of the glowstone as we put it down the middle here. Up we go. Nice to have some light finally in this big old bowl of darkness. These chickens deserve at least a little bit of happiness. We use this as sort of a beacon for the middle, and uh, I need to jump down. Let's make some white stained glass. Bada bing and bada boom. We have a bunch of stacks of the white stained glass. Let's actually just go up three, and I think it'd be nice to bring all of this up to at least halfway up the planet, which means slowly shoving this bed out of the way and also moving these shulker boxes out of the way. And you know what? We could actually take out one layer and just go every other layer and leave a space in between to create a little bit more of a smoky effect. Smack these guys out of the way. And I keep on picking up chicken eggs. I guess the more the merrier. Ooh, got a baby chicken. Let's go. Also, this is probably going to help use only half the materials I was about to just use. Wow. Okay, look at the warm, glowing effect around the glowstone down here. This is awesome. The glass is also nice because it's going to prevent any mobs from spawning in here that would have. 
had to go back down to the good old skeleton XP farm. This is just as good as a bone meal farm as ever. These guys are all going down. We have so many stacks of bones already. And each stack of bones makes three stacks of bone meal. And we also just hit level 250. Not too bad. Over the past couple months, I have been organizing this place down here just a little bit, because I actually came down here a little bit more often than I thought I would. We have a little bit of an area to put the gold and get that down into nuggets. All of the bows we get, we can just move into the grindstone, disenchant them, grab some XP, and move them into the bucket so we can make a dispenser eventually. We now have a little bit of a leather and chainmail storage down here as well. All of these bones we got should make about two shulker boxes worth of the white dye. Let's grab all the glass we can and make as much white stained glass as we can. The smoky effect right now is looking pretty nice. You can barely see some of the chickens that are getting stuck down here. These guys are just fading into the distant fog. Glad I chose the white stained glass though, because any blocks that are not touching the glass right now are just making the contrast super vibrant. We're getting kind of close to halfway. I feel like we're a third of the way built right now. A 101 diameter block sphere is way too big for my own good. When we're done with this, we're going to have a lot of white stained glass to get back in that new stained glass factory storage. Also, I don't know if you guys can see it from where you're at, but when I am highlighting a block in this fog, it's super colorful. Slowly approaching the top of this glowstone, too. We only have about maybe 10 to 12 more layers to go. I am loving the reflection of all these little mini chickens down here, but I am collecting a lot of eggs also. We should start throwing these just a little bit. Three baby chickens right away. Let's go. Probably should get some up here as well. Also, I'm going to continue to shout out the Plots Modeler all day long forever, because I never would have been able to make a sphere this fast without it. Especially now since the rings are getting pretty big, they're about 80 blocks across, which means we're almost at the halfway point. Pop back a whole other layer here with the yellow. Starting to look pretty good now that we have our third layer going. Got most of the layers of the stained glass here, I'm going to get more chickens right here, and then we'll move some right up on this level as well. You guys have a very important job of just hanging out on this very specific stained glass layer. Ran out of glass, so of course we are spending a lot of time down in the librarian trading hall. These guys have just as much glass as I will ever need. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Let's hop over here. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I think I'm going to eventually decorate behind here in this hallway because this is actually just a little bit faster than kind of having to swoop around all those bookshelves. This is the hallway that I used to get the zombie back here to get all these zombified villagers cured, but uh, now I guess I could get it decorated. Sounds like a job for another stream. Way too many stacks of white stained glass to make still, and of course it's raining, it's always raining. I feel like I kind of just made myself a giant bowl of milk. Each layer of white stained glass is making the bowl milkier and milkier. All these guys are just getting wet in the rain now. I feel kind of bad, let's, uh, let's cover them up. You know, guys, I guess you could just take two steps to the right and you'd be very dry, but I, I guess I'll just do all the work for you. I'd be frozen too if I found out I was spending eternity in one of these layers. That should finish this up right here. Okay, we have a lot of chickens. I'm going to keep throwing more and more chickens as these layers get a little bit taller, but I think this might be one of the last layers of glass. Let's get this all the way to the middle. We finally get to touch the glowstone that we set initially. Let's fly away for a moment. I haven't really taken a step back yet, and oh my god, this thing is huge. You can barely see the glowstone all the way at the bottom now. And all of this white stained glass should prevent anything from spawning. The only problem is this outer ridge of concrete. One solution could be just jump down and start throwing a little bit more stained glass down here so nothing spawns. Or we take a moment to build the rings up. I'll actually throw some torches down on this orange layer and we should have a little bit of security. Sir, you gotta go. See you later. And you, sir, out there, you gotta go. Take that. Oh, wait, that's not enough. I guess take that. Oh, God. Wait, 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 sir. Get out of here. You are causing too many problems. Let's go prone for a moment. You're gone, and you over here, sir, you're gone. All right, and with all of these torches now into place, we actually should finally have a little bit of protection. Nothing is going to spawn here. Now we can finally build in peace. Let's, uh, let's get a little bit of this going. Then we can move on to the concrete again. I keep thinking I'm really close to halfway, but now I'm really sure we are close to halfway. Back on the orange, we got four, three, two, three, two, one, two, one, and then another two right here that's going to lead into a bunch of ones. All the way across over here, I believe that's another one. Back on the other side, going into two, and then one, and then two right here, and then we have ones all the way across. 
We have the torches on the yellow layer and another layer of torches on the light blue blocks, but we're probably going to have to get some up here on the orange now. I should have done this ages ago. This is working wonders in regards to mob prevention. Getting concrete here because we are just running out over and over and there are phantoms all over trying to mess with me here. Hold up. We already have a stack of the phantom membranes. When are you guys going to learn? Get over here, buddy. See ya. Head back in here. Grab some more concrete until he comes back down. Get over here. I dare you. Look at you guys on fire now. What are you going to do? Get over here. I dare you. Phantoms are never going to learn. I'm going to go back to making some concrete. Eventually, we'll be able to finally move this little concrete maker up to the planet. Got about eight stacks of the new colors, and whoa, this thing is looking like a planet. Believe it or not, we are not halfway done yet. Luckily, some of these layers near the halfway point just start to replicate themselves, so I can just move easy on the borders like this. Looks like the sun is coming up. Ah, beautiful. As you can see, we kind of been slacking on the white stained glass a little bit. I've been leaving the milk in the cereal bowl a little bit lower than it should be. We'll get the bowl finished here very, very soon, but right now I'm kind of just shifting my focus mainly to the concrete because 101 blocks all the way across is very big, a lot bigger than I intended. All of our stuff down there looks so small and so far away, and now being in here makes me feel like I'm in an arena. I feel like these chickens right here haven't moved in a couple of days. It's kind of freaking me out. I like how you can start to see the circle in the middle of the planet now. I think the light blue is the exact midway point, but I'll consider this halfway done as soon as we have that circle done. Now we just use the red and we're gonna start to inch our way inward. Got more yellow, got more orange. We should be looking good. And yep, of course there are phantoms out here. Hold up guys, please. All I wanna do is build my planet. Leave me alone, please, Le leave me alone. Sir, I'm begging you, leave me alone. Now there's a zombie, get out of here, sir. Thank you, please get out of here. And a wandering trader, what are you doing out here? What do you got for me? Okay, purple dye, oh, coral blocks, I'll take those. This thing is absolutely crazy. It's starting to render in just from this side of the beach. Even back here at the leather worker trading hall, if we turn around, the planet starts to come into existence. This thing is enormous. I'm thinking we're gonna take this middle circle out later and we're gonna replace it with some glowstone and maybe some glass for some giant windows. I had to start placing some torches up here as well because, you know, I mean, I don't want anything spawning up here. If a creeper blows us up up here and takes out some concrete, that's no good. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then I believe we need just one, one, two, one. And these ones all the way across in the middle here. Dude, this is insane. This bowl is huge. In fact, this thing is getting so big that we probably need to start- Yep, exactly. There's a skeleton all the way down here. We can shoot him down, but we probably need to start getting some torches up in here. Get a few on the oranges over here. We can fly over, maybe get some right here every once in a while on the red over there too. Can't really reach it. There we go. Just gotta hop down and hopefully stuff stops spawning. Each and every layer that we create makes this place just a little bit more mesmerizing. I cannot wait to get to the top. It's going to look great. And actually, what I'm thinking is these guys are just still, just they're so still. So let's break this. Let's break this. That's awesome. It turns into a rainbow cube when they're floating. But what I wanted to do was, you know, just put some water right here. And let's get these chickens moving just a little bit. Let's get them spread out. For some reason, they're just hanging out by each other. Let's just, uh, you know, let's get them out there. Plug that back up. Plug this back up. And all right, where are my rockets at? Let's go get that yellow layer on. Right here, this yellow is going to mark layer number 80, I believe. So we're going to just place a few right here. We have four blocks of space. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three. We got one, two right here with one, two. Break this guy. We have one right here with one, two again. If you guys are wondering what the streams are like, this is pretty much what it is. It's a lot of me just counting, trying to figure out how to get this thing to be perfect. But each layer that we work on gets faster and faster, so I'm excited as we approach the top. These are only going to take a few minutes each. Boom, 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 bing, bang, a little bit of boom over here with a bop. Wow, we are on day 8,951 at the moment, which gives us 49 days to complete this planet before day 9,000. And you know what? We can do it. I believe in us. Luckily, we have a lot of torches on the outside, though, to be able to prevent the creepers from spawning, because if we didn't have any torches, man, this would be a mob farm. Hey, look, you can see my shadow all the way over there. What's going on, little shadow? Couple more layers, gotta get the blue finished here. I am gonna miss the circular shadow moving all the way across the sphere during the day, but we do gotta close this up. These layers are starting to become too wide now, which is nice. Now these corners just need to be beefed up a little bit. Moving on to the purple. 
Gotta zigzag our way down this way. Now we can move into magenta real fast. And this might be the last layer that I put at the top real quick, because I do want a way to get in and out for the time being before I start making windows and tunnels. This layer is looking like it is going to be extra thick. These ones are a little bit more difficult to eye out because you're not necessarily just counting circles, you're counting wider block palettes. I think this is a nice opening. We could actually cover this up with glass, maybe go up a couple more layers, but for right now I just need it open so I can get in here and start to build up a little bit. We need to light this place up other than the light coming from the center. This Oh wait, we have a hole in the center too. Looks like it's light blue. I'm gonna have to take one block up there and get that put in. For some reason I grabbed 40, but there we go. Since this thing is so massive, I'm just going to fly away for a moment, and wow, okay, this is crazy. I am just absolutely blown away right now. The circle's not complete, you can see we still have to get the top done, but we will do that later. This circle over here, though, if we take a look right on the edge, I think this could make for a good window. I want to use some glowstone for the windows, but uh, we're going to have to go buy some more, so I'm going to have to sell some more iron to get more emeralds. Might as well mend the tools here as well. I'll take all the glowstone you guys have, thank you very much, appreciate that. Man, I really do appreciate the clerics for providing so much glowstone. I'm glad we don't have to go to the nether to get so much. Just gotta fly until the planet just appears into render distance. That is crazy. Okay, so for the perfect circle right here, stuff can spawn right there. Let's bring a pickaxe and let's try to land right on the corner. Perfect. Let's break this open and that open. I guess we'll start right here and we'll just start inching our way forward. I feel like the glowstone is kind of a more neutral color than all of the frog lights and the sea lanterns. So that's kind of why I'm going with the glowstone. As far as the insides go, I feel like I should probably just jump over here. There we go. Let's actually just break this down. Probably going to replace this with a giant glass window. I really got to be careful, man. There's so many things that are trying to kill me in here now. Honestly, it feels very satisfying taking away some of the concrete after placing so much concrete in the past couple of days. And if you guys weren't here, this has been taking about five days total worth of Twitch streams, and it's been a lot of hours of live streams. So thank you guys for being here during the construction of this. This took forever. Buddy, I don't know what you're doing down there, but you're never going to reach me. I'm just going to stop you in your tracks. Well, and of course, we're already making mistakes. Let's take these away. And then we'll replace this pink right here. All right, so that should be it. Okay, perfect. Look at that window. This is nuts. Now we can get in and out from one side. What if we did all four sides? We'll have four entrances from each side, plus one from the top that'll be slightly larger. There's so much room to fly around in here. This is awesome. Building these circles and lighting them up, though, is going to start to get a little dangerous, especially with all these creepers right here lingering. So what I'm thinking is we're probably going to have to get some lines of glowstone going around the center. Starting from the top, let's actually just take these two out. We'll go boom, boom. One at a time, down the blue, down the purple. We're definitely going to have a lot of blocks to go pick up after this. You be gone, you be gone, you be gone, you be gone. As we start to get down to where it's a little bit more steep, I'm probably going to have to start towering up with a little bit of this glowstone too so it doesn't start to look so separated. Yeah, it's getting very steep down here and some of these aren't even touching so we're going to have to continue towering up for sure. I don't know if I like the way this glowstone is looking. Let's just fly into the inside real quick. I just want to see if it's... Uh, I mean, it is giving it a little bit more light, but is that the way we want it to be lit? This is kind of... It's a little strange looking. I feel like we should just use end rods, kind of like how we did with the igloo. Yeah, this thing could be lit up with end rods on the outside for sure. If we fly down here right below us, I actually lit up this igloo from a couple episodes ago with end rods on the outside, and that actually worked wonders. I usually just actually, oh, oh, I'm in the powdered snow. This is not good, and now I'm falling. Well, uh, what's up, Arctic Foxes? How you guys doing? I guess I uh, just am saying what's up to you guys now. This guy has my scaffolding. Jeez, this thing is massive. It takes four rockets to get all the way up here. Yeah, okay, let's take out this glowstone. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit of a waste of time that I just did, but we'll replace all of the blocks that we took out. Then every block that once was a glowstone is now just going to have an end rod on top of it. At first, I was thinking glowstone was the most neutral lighting source, but end rods really are the most neutral. Plus, they give a little bit of that glimmering effect. Spider, you are not welcome here. We're going to have to get this lit up. We're going to add a bunch of end rod fixtures, and these are all going to be connected with chains here. One over there, three right here. We'll put another three right here. Then we can drop down. I have a small line of end rods already, but I would like to put one right here and there. And if we keep dropping down, I would like to... Actually, you know what? The end rod does go right below this layer of glass. We could continue to go straight down. And these guys are falling. Okay, what's happening? Is everybody coming up? Everybody coming down? What's going on? 
Okay, just a moment. Let's take a step back. I want to find a way to do that without having all the chickens escape. But these windows are looking good. We just need to continue adding all of the chains right in between all of these end rod towers. Get one right there. Get three of them right here. This place looks like a giant observatory, but really all it is is just a simple concrete maker and concrete powder and concrete storage. Fly on over to this side over here. We have no chains. This is a chainless area. We got to get some chains right here and right now. Got one right here. One, two, three. And it looks like we do have a few torches that we left to take out. Start to take out the torches on the side and replace them with some end rods here for some decoration. And of course, it's raining again. It's always raining. This is looking absolutely outstanding. I, I love the roof here. I just, you know what? Let's finally sleep. We'll get the rain going away here. Let's fly out the top. I kind of want to move the concrete maker exactly where all of our store. Oh my God, all these mobs up here. There's so many. Look at all of these. Let's get out of here before anything tries to start shooting us. Let's just, uh, let's go straight down. Let's get that concrete maker, all of these materials, pretty much everything right here. We're just going to move it right up into the center. You treated us very well, concrete maker. I appreciate everything you did for us, but uh, it's time for us to move on to bigger and better things. Let's take the dispenser. Let's take the observer. Popping all the way back down. This place is awesome. I love flying through here, man. I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of this. Look at the layers of shadows going through all the stained glass right now. Let's get a nice little layer of quartz bricks going around the center. Then we'll line the bricks up with some quartz stairs. Time to replicate that concrete maker. But I'm actually thinking right now, this glowstone little tower right here, we could have this be a portal where I could drop straight out of the concrete maker when I'm done. But that would mean actually moving the concrete maker back to about right here. Get an upside down stair with some glass panes on the side. That way I can have a little bit of a window. Why not? Especially when we have some beautiful stuff to look at. Small difference this time would be using the minecart with a hopper. Gotta have both of these guys facing downward, so let's put the redstone dust right on top now. In order to get the items to not fly out the back, let's just put some spruce trap doors in. Also, shout out to Ajak Minecraft for this design and tutorial. I loved the video. I'll shout it out in the description down below. Instead of using a sign to block the water, I'll use a glow like in this time. And oh my god, I only have one glow like, and I guess oh, it is what it is. Ooh, also, okay, there's a few torches that I missed right here. I'll have to take them out as soon as it's safe. There's definitely going to be a creeper that tries to spawn, and there's a bunch of zombies right here. Let's just hop in, get back to the safety of the concrete maker. Anything that tries to fall from up there will perish. One glow like in right here, one little piece of water right there, and that's about it. All right, and as far as storage goes, we should actually just get a nice barrel system set up right behind the quartz. We're going to develop a little wall here at each corner. I think that would be pretty cool, especially if we add some glowstone and some flowering azalea leaves to the top. Let's get these in each of the four corners. Then we got to pop down and light these candles on the four corners of the quartz. It's nice having a little fort in here. We can get in and out with these fence gates, and I don't think anything's going to be able to spawn in here, but even if they do, they're not going to be able to get past this little barrier. And if anything were to get past the gate, we do have a nice little escape pod right here that will actually allow us to just shoot right down the center and back into the ocean. And all the way down here we go. There's a couple chickens I noticed that are down here. What are you guys doing? One last thing I wanted to do to the very top. Level 100 is this red. I could add orange for level 101 to actually make the top complete, but I want to leave this open so I can fly in and out from the top. Very curious to see what this looks like from the bottom. Let's also fly down. I have some brown concrete powder that I need to use because I've never really made brown concrete. So let's actually just, uh, let's throw it right here. Put that in the offhand real quick. Let's make a little bit of brown concrete because I actually didn't really have any to throw into the storage. Run around the back side. We do have some now. We can throw it over here to complete the storage system. Throw you guys in and bam. We have the white, light gray, gray, black, and brown over here. Completing with the rainbow colors. And I would say that that actually is going to complete the interior of this build. There's not much else I wanted to do. We have a lot of empty space, but I actually really like that. This only really is supposed to function as a concrete maker, and that's exactly what we got. Smack you out for good measure. Okay, well, that was not a good idea. Let's just put that back, and okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode, and again, I really do appreciate your patience on these. I know this one took a long time to come out, but this planet is huge. It took a while to build it, and you guys are the best community anybody could ask for. Thank you to all the new Patreon supporters and the Twitch supporters, as well as all of the new channel members here on YouTube. Thank you guys, that really means a lot. I am just still blown away that we actually made a planet in this world. This is just so crazy. Having this thing render in and out is my new favorite thing in Minecraft. I'm just loving this. 
thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate y'all. And remember to do something nice for somebody. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, bye.